So I have decided to tell the story of Psyche and Eros, but not so much in the traditional way. I rather enjoy taking stories and sort of running with them and seeing where they go. Um, so our story takes place in the time when gods still were believed in by humans and so that allowed them to actually walk around and interact with humans. Um, so you know the time when Zeus could sleep with whoever he wanted and Hera was causing problems and Ares was creating wars and people very much believed that they existed and had conversations with them all the time. So our story is about a woman named Psyche. Now Psyche was the youngest daughter of three, maybe four, it's not particularly important, but she was gorgeous. She was absolutely the most beautiful woman you've ever met. Um, so beautiful in fact that men came from all over Greece to adore her. They worshiped this poor girl. I mean, can you imagine being just like an average ordinary girl and people showing up with the same offerings they're giving to gods? I mean, that's enough to drive everyone crazy. And this girl, all she wanted to do was be a good girl and get married, but none of them wanted to marry her because they wanted to worship her. And none of them wanted to marry a god. They just wanted to marry like the ugly next door neighbor. And so poor Psyche was husbandless. But she wasn't the only one that was upset about her beauty. See, Aphrodite, who was notoriously, like, got upset about things, like involved in Troy because she got into a bitter contest and asked, Paris, who was more beautiful, her or somebody else, right? She decides she's just gonna punish this poor girl for being beautiful. It's not Psyche's fault she's beautiful. It's not even like her fault that everyone worships her. She's just trying to have a normal life and get married. Anyway, Aphrodite tells her son Eros to go down and put her to sleep and then pierce her with his arrow so that the first thing that she wakes up when she sees, she'll fall in love with. And obviously the plan behind this is that she'll be humiliated and fall in love with someone ugly or like an animal or something. And it'll just be just punishment for this girl just being naturally beautiful. So ironically, Eros goes down and he too falls in love with this girl. He's like, damn girl, I'm in love with you. You're gorgeous. I'm not gonna make you fall in love with some ugly bloke. In fact, I think I wanna marry you. But I can't because my mom's being a jerk about it, so we have to come up with some sort of scheme. Now, she's asleep, so she doesn't have any of this knowledge. She's just having a lovely dream. So Eros doesn't put her to sleep, and he goes back to his mom's like, yeah, mom totally did that. It's all taken care of. Don't worry about it. So meanwhile, Psyche's dad is like, I need to get this girl married. I want some grandkids. Like, this is ridiculous. They're all worshiping her. So he goes to the Apollo Oracle and says, Apollo, Lord, God, what do I do about this girl? And Apollo gives him a horrible, horrible prophecy. He's like, oh, don't worry about her. Just leave her on the mountain. She's gonna marry a serpent, an ugly, winged, hideous serpent. So you know what? Problem solved. The dad's devastated, but this is what the gods told him. So that's what he's gonna do. You don't go against the gods. We all know what happens when you go against the gods. So he dresses his daughter in black because it's as good as not her funeral, drops her off on the cliff and says, sorry, hun, enjoy your life. Now this poor woman is devastated that this is her lot in life. I mean, she didn't ask to be beautiful. And at this point, the wind intervenes and is like, that's it, this is ridiculous. And he just scoops her up, Zephyr. Like Zephyr is kind of a chill guy for wind. And he scoops her up, takes her into the sky and drops her off at this gorgeous palace. Now Psyche isn't really a princess or anything, so this palace is like the prettiest thing she's ever seen. And she's like, oh my God, what is this? Where am I? She goes inside and she's just wandering around trespassing. And she's just like, I guess this is where I am now. Maybe there's an evil serpent. I don't know. She gets inside and this voice is like, welcome home, Psyche. Your husband will be here soon. So this being ancient Greek, and she already has so little say in who she's marrying. She's like, okay, whatever. I guess my husband will show up. And that night, he does, and they make love, and it's actually, like, surprisingly wonderful. And she's like, wow, okay, I can get used to this. He listens to me, I listen to him, we seem to, like, get along. Only downside is she doesn't know what he looks like. He absolutely refuses to say who he is or turn on the light. And she's like, that's a little bit weird, but um, as long as he's a decent guy, I think I can go with it. So this is, like, their life. He goes out hunting during the day, he comes back. They make love. She hangs out during the day and does whatever she does in an empty palace by herself. Eventually, she starts to get a little bit bored and is like, hey, hubby, 
can my sisters come visit for a little bit? It might be nice to see them. And he's like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Just uh, don't listen to them. Don't believe what they say. They're going to be jealous. They're going to tell you a bunch of stuff. And um, it'll screw stuff up. We got a good thing going. So yeah, invite them, but don't believe them. Well, she does exactly that. She invites them and they're jealous. They're like, whoa, how does our sister get all of this? She doesn't know who her husband is. She's supposed to marry a snake and yet she's in this gorgeous palace. So they're like, yo sister, who's your husband? She's like, oh, I don't know. He's a hunter, but he won't let me see what he looks like. And they're like, oh, well, uh, he might be that snake. You ever think about that? You might want to look at him. He could be lying. You know, you can't trust a man when he's in the daylight, let alone at night. So poor Psyche has all of these doubts now. She's like, oh man, they could be right. I don't know what he looks like. This is such a stupid idea that I don't know what my husband looks like. I just trust blindly that he is a decent guy. So that night, she, after he's fallen asleep, she gets out the candle and she lights it over his face because she's like, I'm just going to look while he sleeps. He'll never know. Well, she's mesmerized. It's this god, a freaking god is her husband. He's asleep, he's beautiful. She's like, oh my gosh, it's Eros. I recognize him. Why am I his wife? I didn't know this. Well, she's so like preoccupied with the idea that she's married to this god that she doesn't notice wax dripping on his face. Well, Eros notices it and wakes up with a start and is like, what? And then he recognizes what's happening and he flips out. He's like, oh my god, you don't trust me? you betrayed me. We can never love as equals because I'm a god and you're immortal. And he's just like, please. He runs. Like, that's it. No communication, no nothing. He just runs out. And Aphrodite, I mean, not Aphrodite, Psyche is like, oh my gosh, I've done a horrible, horrible thing. And she's devastated. She's like, I'm married to a god and yet I just screwed this up. So she's like, okay, I'll go to Aphrodite. I'll explain what's happening and hopefully she can correct this. She doesn't know that Aphrodite tried to humiliate her. And Aphrodite doesn't know that Eros has been spending time with her psyche. So they're both surprised when they actually meet and they're both like, oh, oh. So Aphrodite's like, okay, here's what we're gonna do, girl. I'm gonna give you three tasks to prove your love for my son. And if you can um, pass those, then uh, yeah, I'll let him know you came knocking and that you still have feelings for him. She doesn't tell um, Psyche that Eros has been just weeping uncontrollably for like the past week in her bedroom, bound and determined and convinced that Psyche has loved him forever. So Psyche is like, okay, this is a great idea. I can do these tasks. I can prove my love. So the first task that Psyche is given is to sort through this monstrous pile of seeds into individual seeds. So each there's a pile and there's like 500 different kinds of seeds and she has to sort through them all within like a day and Psyche looks at it and immediately starts crying she's like this is a horrible task I'll never be able to do this I might as well just go home now so when she's crying this army of ants are going by and they notice this beautiful woman who's sobbing by a pile of seeds and they're like dear one why are you crying and she tells them the whole story and the ants agree that this is a horrendous task and no one should be asked to do this. And they were like, leave it to us. We'll sort it. This is like very easy work for us. And they do, they make short work of it. And when Aphrodite comes back, she's shocked that the piles are all evenly sorted out into all the different kinds of seeds. And she's like, Ugh, well, we've got two more tasks. Okay. So the second task is she takes Psyche to this cliff and there's a huge chasm and then there's a waterfall and it's black and she's like psyche collect some water for me and bring it back psyche's like well how am i supposed to get to the waterfall i can't fly over the chasm and it's way too low for me to climb all the way down and all the way back up there's no way for me to get over there there's no bridges well there's an eagle who's pleasantly flying along and hears her crying and he comes down and is like dear one why are you crying so much and she tells him the whole sad story and the eagle takes her side and is rather sympathetic to her and it's like you're right this is a very odd task to prove your love give me the bottle and I'll fill it up and he does just that it takes him very short time to fly over dip the water out of the waterfall and come back when Aphrodite returns again she is shocked 
and outraged that Psyche has somehow managed to do this task. So she says, don't worry, to herself, one more task. This one will get her for sure. She asks that Psyche go to the underworld and petition Persephone for a little bit of beauty and to bring that beauty back to Aphrodite. Now Aphrodite's pretty sure Persephone is not going to give her any of her beauty. They don't have the most uh, friendly of relationships. Psyche, desperate to see Eros again, agrees and makes her way into the underworld. Um, she does all the proper protocol when she gets there. She gives a coin to the ferryman so that she can have safe passage there and back. And when she finds Afri and when she finds Persephone on the throne, she beseeches her and tells her the whole story and says, I ask for but a bit of your beauty, not for myself, but for Aphrodite, so that I might see my love again. And Persephone is moved by the whole tale, and she's like, sure, you can have some of my beauty. I'm immortal anyway, why do I need it? And puts it in the little box and seals it up and says, here, give this to Aphrodite for me. And Psyche is thrilled. She's done all three tasks. She takes the beauty back to Aphrodite, and Aphrodite is not thrilled. Not only did this girl accomplish all three tasks, she did them with like flying colors. And she throws a massive fit and it's like, you know what? You're never gonna see Eros again. You're, he's too good for you. You're just immortal. You're not fit to be anything but a servant and go clean the floor. Like you are forever bounded to my servitude. And Psyche is devastated because this is a goddess and the goddess told her that she's gonna be her servant for the rest of her life and she goes to clean the floor because what else is she supposed to do at this point? Um, and that's kind of where we think the story is going to end. And if it wasn't for the fact that like Apollo and Hermes had been sort of watching this whole thing unfold and decide that enough is enough, that like Aphrodite's kind of being a you know what at this point, they decide to intervene. Um, Hermes goes and finds Eros, who's still crying. Like Eros needs to grow up, in my opinion. But he's like, dude, your girl, she's trekked all the way over here. She's done all these like horrific tasks your mother asked you and now she's cleaning the freaking floor because she loves you. So if you can't get up and go tell her that you love her, then you don't deserve to be in this situation anymore. And Eros is like, what? Psyche's here? Of course, I'll go find her. I love her. I didn't know she was here. Which in his um, defense, Aphrodite didn't tell him any of this. I'm sure she was like, oh, she's left that awful person. So he goes and finds this girl and it's like, I'm so sorry. Of course we can love equally. Obviously your love is as great as mine. Like I make this, let's make this up to each other and live happily ever after together. And Psyche thinks about it and she's like, yeah, nah, bro. No, no, just kidding. Um, it's too modernistic now. She says, yeah, I love you too. And they have a happy life together, as happy as it can be in ancient Greek stories. I'm sure there is some tragic sequel that I haven't actually looked up yet. So, the end.